In Mariupol in Ukraine, the mayor and military commander tonight saying that the city possibly has just hours left before it falls to the Russians. There were some holdouts uh, working very hard over the last few weeks to maintain control of that city. It doesn't appear that they have a lot of time left. Meantime, people are trying to flee. Buses are lining up on the roadways. You see them there of people in the line of fire trying to get out uh, before it's too late. All of this is Kharkiv. That's the hardest hit city in the east right now collects its dead from the streets. These images are just horrifying to see. Ukraine saying that bombings have destroyed 2,000 high-rise buildings in the city, and they're preparing for even more fighting on the heels. And in Chernov, destruction yet again. The city occupied for a month by the Russians there, and we've got some new pictures emerging of the destruction, the bombings, and what little is left of so many of these buildings, homes, businesses. And all of this happening while there are reports now indicating the West has indeed been providing some fighter jets and helicopters to Ukraine, something that the country has asked for. Of course, 800 million, uh, the latest addition in munitions. We could hear more about that tomorrow. As Kelly Meyer mentioned just a few moments ago, President Biden scheduled to give an update on the war tomorrow morning. Uh, that will likely come up. And he also said this today about the Ukrainians. I knew they were tough and proud, but I tell you what, they're tougher and more proud than I thought. I'm amazed what they're doing with your help in terms of providing advice and, uh, and, and the, the weapon we're providing, along with the rest of NATO. It never gets old, Leland, talking about the resiliency of the Ukrainian mm -hmm. forces, and they are really up against some of their toughest battles yet when you look at what's happening in Mariupol right now and also on the eastern side of the country. Yeah, and you talked about the resilience of the Ukrainian fighters very, very well. We're now 50-plus days in, and this is basically the only area that's left of the Ukrainian resistance here inside Mariupol, and there is no way for them to get supplies in. There's no way for them to get their wounded out. This down here is the Sea of Azov, and the Azov Iron and Steel Works is the only area that's left. So the Russians have them surrounded and are able to just keep pounding away at the Ukrainians here. As they said, it's only a matter of time until the Russians succeed in that. We'll head now to a larger area of the east. And this is where now all the fighting uh, is happening. And you can see here uh, the we're fighting all of these purple dots uh, as the Ukrainians uh, are on the defensive and the Russians are trying to put out. This is Luhansk and the People's Republic of Luhansk, which is what uh, Vladimir Putin recognized right before the beginning of this war now goes like this, and the Russians have about 80 to 90 percent of it already secured. So you're talking about them pushing just not very far here. Krematorsk is going to be your main battle. There's a large Ukrainian contingent uh, here, about 20,000 troops. But if the Russians are able to close this uh, and pinch them in, what's happening to those thousands of Ukrainians in Mariupol is going to be the same thing that happens here. Uh, want to bring in uh, retired Air Force Major uh, Glenn Ignazio uh, with that to begin the conversation. Uh, tell us, we've heard this anecdotally that there's going to be a couple of additional helicopters sent in, a couple of additional uh, MiG fighter planes for the Ukrainians to fly. Uh, are they at the point where they're able to really use this air power effectively against the Russians, especially in what is, what is essentially uh, Russian home turf now? Yeah, anything that they can have or anything they can get is definitely uh, important. I mean, the helicopters will be a couple of reasons, a couple of things to one, get people out. Second, to do air assaults to bring uh, troops in. And at the same time, if they're attack helicopters, to be able to actually engage them, uh, engage the enemies. Now, the fighter thing, that's a really interesting that's happened. And it's actually changed in the first uh, couple hours, even even today, is that Secretary of State Kirby said earlier that there's fighters being sent from NATO. We're supporting them with parts. Then there was a flu saying, well, no, we're not sending fighters, but we're sending parts and so forth back to it. Ukraine says we are getting fighters. Some of the countries that are support, supposedly supplying it saying they're not. So it's really interesting about what's yes. happening. But I'll tell you one thing is that the Ukrainian military, any kind of fighter aircraft that they can get will literally give them that air dominance that they need from the Russian military. And the Su-34 is the most fifth generation most advanced fighter in the Russian inventory and four have been taken down in Ukraine already. So the Ukrainians really need those types of aircraft. And I'm really, really concerned about what is really going on right now, just like the Ukrainians must be. 
Yeah, Kirby at the Pentagon, uh, the spokesman there, uh, you have to think that there's sort of this idea of ambiguity, right, of plausible deniability, because the polls, uh, if they were going to give fighter jets, it, they didn't want it coming from them, so magically these planes might uh, show up in Ukraine. Uh, you've flown in these sort of really contested areas of airspace. It's MH17s that the Ukrainians are getting. But just in terms of the supply lines now, it has shifted, right, because all the supplies come in here just outside uh, of a NATO base in Poland. They come through Lviv, and then they go out to Kyiv. Uh, they come down to Odessa, where they perhaps are going to get some anti-ship missiles, and then they come out to the east. These are the most va vulnerable supply lines, and you're heading right into the teeth of the Russian forces. Uh, even contested airspace, uh, the supply convoys have to be target number one for the Russians, right? Yes, they definitely are. From what we saw before, you saw the Russians' logistics train being completely stretched, and they were, again, clobbered. This new general coming in, he's a lot smarter. He's bringing together what we call multi-domain warfare, using airspace and, and ground assets together and the intelligence to really carry things out. When they brought back to the border, they've organized very well, and now they're pushing together and creating a very good front. You've also watched more bombers and missiles going off further to the west, which is starting to strike the actual logistics chain that the Ukraine have been relying on. We talked, uh, I believe it was last week, about the tactical fighters can't get there. The long-range bombers and the missiles can. They have a high fail rate, but the idea of impacting the Ukrainian logistics chain really hasn't happened before and is going to start now because the man is actually a lot smarter than the generals he had out there before. You talked about missiles. The Russians today launched this ICBM they call Satan-2 uh, in a test. Uh, you've got to be an idiot or a fool to believe in coincidences here of this being a message uh, yet again from Vladimir Putin of, you know, uh, nuclear weapons are still uh, an option here. They say that this can in, uh, evade all of the U.S. current missile defense systems. Is there anything that we saw in this ICBM launch that was different that would actually uh, prove what Vladimir Putin's claiming? Uh, no, other than the marketing is really good. But, you know, with the START Treaty or Strategic Arms uh, Reductions Treaty, uh, they have to notify us before uh, they launch a missile so we know it's not real. We do the same thing. We actually canceled two uh, of our missile tests, what, this week and a couple weeks ago, so it didn't get misunderstood as what we're doing. So this missile takes off. It's supposed to carry more warheads. These are called MIRVs, which means multiple independent reentry vehicles. Those are basically four, five, or even up to ten is what they're saying warhead so one missile can actually hit 10 separate targets what he's saying is that once these warheads get into the atmosphere coming in that they can roam around and so forth that's the hypersonic technology and we haven't really seen them do that best even with the missiles that they say they have so to say that really could carry you know could actually work i'm not so clear about that but we also have an incredible ballistic missile defense yeah. system that we focused on in the united states and and that's job is to take out any kind of icbm like this yeah, on the other hand, you probably uh, wouldn't want to have to find out the hard way whether or not he was telling the truth or not. Uh, Major, we appreciate it. Important to note that there's some interesting stuff in the Wall Street Journal. I'll talk with Marnie about that. Major, thank you very much. Um, and it, it's amazing. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.